Let me read you a quote because this is where the problem started on my recent trip. It's not flashy. That's why sometimes I try to trick myself into not packing it. Now, I don't know who said that. Sure doesn't sound like me. But this guy kept carrying on. But the range, weather sealing, size, image stabilization, and constant f4 never let me down. That all still holds up for both of these lenses. The RF 24-105 f4 and RF 70-200 f4 after several years. The thing about jumping on a plane to go halfway around the world, committing them to the limited space in the bag, doesn't feel exciting. Your fast primes get sad to be left behind. And I say the problem tongue in cheek because these both work really well as boring staples in my core four kit. Besides, it wasn't just one problem that I had. It was 1800, 10 and three quarter problems after booking tickets. So there I was headed from Philly to New Zealand, time ticking down to take off. And I wrestled with whether to bring the fast 28 millimeter and 85 millimeter, two that I just had such a great time with in Colorado in the fall or rely heavily on these zooms. I considered renting something new as well, like the 15 to 35 or the 100 to 500 because I've been dying to try them. This was my first once in a lifetime scale trip and the stakes felt high after it became real when booking tickets. So I wanted to set myself up with the best combo for my broader set of gear. Stuff that fit nicely in a travel package to do memories justice in case I never got back. No pressure, but I kind of ran out of time to think it all through. So I packed up two old reliables and off we went. Just kidding, immediately delayed, missed our connection, spent the time sleeping from 3 to 11 a.m. in San Francisco, kind of being miserable, to be honest. The travel to and from sucks, but it does mercifully end at some point. We did finally land, and if you're new, I'm Dan. I'd call myself a travel and landscape photographer, I guess. We look at gear in a long-term fashion on this channel. That's why I keep revisiting these lenses, and I think it makes sense to review gear in the context of what else might be in your bag already, because I get joy out of continually refining my kit in a thoughtful way. If you are considering buying either of these two lenses. Let's toss the RF 14 to 35 in this bucket as well. Or if you're looking at the F28 siblings, nothing I say in this video should be surprising. My main goal is share some images from the trip to share my experience why boring F4s can get a lot done for you if you shoot similar to me. The big takeaway is this. Generally, when people wrestle with whether or not to buy these zooms, it's because they've got F 2.8 FOMO. All of these lenses are Canon L, weather sealed, they have image stabilization, constant apertures. These ones are a hell of a lot cheaper, lighter, more packable. So can you get away with F4? And the answer is generally yes. Now what else you shoot is a big deciding factor. If you also do a lot of indoor work or high shutter speed shooting in addition to travel, and you don't want to rock two lenses, absolutely consider the big boys. Or simply if you want them and have a fat wallet. I'll hold out hope for a 15 to 35 millimeter one day myself. Otherwise, it's my view that you don't want to jump to f2.8 lenses for the sole reason that you feel like the bokeh is much more impressive. I feel like you don't truly start to get that magic sauce until you open up to f2 and wider. There are surely shots from this trip where I had one of these two lenses on that I would have liked to shoot with a shallower depth of field. After all, you're packing them because you have limited space. By definition, there's some compromise. So you'll have a few painful moments as a photographer where you may have some of that prime FOMO. This mushroom at 105mm f4 would have loved to blow everything in the foreground and background away, the 85mm f1.4 was missed. A shot like this, the 28mm f1.4 was missed. Still really happy with the shot, happy with the edit, but the foreground fencing and platform would have been nice to blow away a bit in camera. This shot of the nugget, again, wide open 28 millimeter in order to blur the foreground grasses would have been my preference. Same thing here with the lighthouse. I'm at F9 here. Because I didn't have F14, I tried to lean into a deeper depth of field and should have gone even harder, like F11 or F13 maybe. But this area was festering with people and I got right up in there, got my best shot, pow pow, and got out. This is Ikea, missed opportunity here. Nothing spectacular you're gonna be able to turn this into from a photography standpoint, given that it's perched on a red Mustang, but I snagged the memory at least. If I had my 70 to 200 millimeter on at this moment, it would have been much better at 200 millimeter. This is a good example of where 105 millimeter is better than maxing out at 70 millimeters on a Trinity lens. That shared 70 to 105 millimeter range is something I really value. And then certainly it might've been nice to catch one of these waterfalls wide open at 85 mil as well. But this is from the Milford Sound and that cruise, that day trip is really where I started to feel like I'm really thankful this is a day I can shoot with zooms across a large focal range, opposed to having just one exciting prime. And getting a whiff of that feeling, the sound 
satisfaction of making the right choice is great. It's kind of like, ah, I can go home happy. On the boat, it's up and down. There's a lot of people to shoot in between and maneuver around. It's raining on and off. Basically, the exact use case of where these lenses, when combined with an R6 or R5, are made to frolic. Zoom to frame around people, IS to help with unstable hands and high winds, weather sealing, obviously. And you aren't changing lenses easily on the fly either. So the 70 to 105 millimeter range comes up big. It reminds me an awful lot of scenarios in Ireland from the past where I felt the same way. Unenthused to pack them, but really thankful that I did. The sacrifice that I made on this trip is that while I come away with some nice travel and landscape images that I'm happy with, and a select few edits that I think have pushed at the edges of my skill, I feel like I left some of those banger portraits on the table. New Zealand is in fact Middle Earth, so I just wish I had better shots of Sam, Mary, and Pippin. Not to assume the role of the main character here, but that would leave me as Frodo. <laughs> So as I get back home and reflect on the trip and the images, and I toil tirelessly in Lightroom until my eyes bleed, has anything changed for me with these F4s over all of the years that I've used them? Not really. It's almost as if they simultaneously grow more boring, yet more useful to me as they age. And I don't think you want all of your kit to feel that way. I definitely don't. But I think it's advantageous for some of it to feel that way. Steady tools that you've come to count on in faraway places that don't break your back, that don't break your bank. You've got plane tickets to buy after all. I haven't committed to an L prime yet, but I did sneak in two tiny primes on this trip. You can see how I use those mostly on the Canon R8 as a compact second shooter, or for parts of the trip as a small primary everyday carry setup.